but as we'll shortly see, in governments we don't. And that's what drives people crazy. Recognized on a, similar to business organizations, so uh, operational accountability, flow of economic resources, and accrual basis. Those are the three things that you need to uh, understand with this, with the government-wide. Because uh, when we go to the next part, fund financial statements, Okay, so let me explain this to you, how this works. Because I have to, we're going to condense what we're going to study in the next five weeks into this couple of minutes. Okay, so put yourself in as a government. And uh, you have several bank accounts. One bank account is that you use for everyday living. You have one bank account that you use for um, paying educational expenses. You have one bank account that you use for taking vacations. And then you have one bank account that you use for paying loans that you might have had. Why do you do that? Why not just put it all together into one? Why do people like to separate things like that? Yeah. So you can literally prepare a balance sheet for each one of them, right? You've just learned fund accounting. That's how governments operate, exactly the same way. They have a fund for everything. There's a fund for general government. There's a fund for paying off loans that they've borrowed. There are funds for specific purposes. And we'll talk about these different funds, OK? And that's what a fund is. A fund is, and we'll look at it, it's an accounting entity by itself. It's like your own checkbook. And see where it says flow of current financial resources? It's a fancy word for cash. Current financial resources are what? Cash. Okay. And that's what the basis of accounting is. It's almost like a cash basis. We don't call it cash basis. We call it modified accrual basis. But you need to understand that, and this is where some of you are going to have trouble. But I'll try to keep this as simple. You'll have to use both sides of it. Every transaction you look at, you have to decide if it were based on fund accounting principles, how would I record this transaction? If it were based on business type of accounting, accrual basis, how would I record the transaction? Give you an example. You go and buy a building. Under accrual basis, you've just done what? Acquired an asset. Under the modified accrual basis, you've just spent the money. There is no asset. But that's why governments are required to prepare two sets so people can look at one, which shows the cost, and it shows the other, which shows the asset itself. Don't be confused. We'll talk about, as, we, as I said, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this. So government financial statements assist in assessing fiscal accountability. The other one was operational accountability, which is how the government raised and spent financial resources in accordance with budgetary, legal, and regulatory constraint. And as I said to you, fund revenues and expenditures are recognized on a modified accrual basis. Now, I'll give you a little secret here. When you see the word expense, it should tell you that's what? Accrual basis. If it says expenditure, it's what? Modified. An expense can never be modified accrual basis. Because the definition of an expense is expiration of a cost, of a period cost of some kind. Okay? So don't use these terms interchangeably. Expense is accrual basis. Expenditure is modified accrual basis. And notice the last part of the sentence. Expenditures when an obligation is incurred that will be paid from currently available financial resources. So if you're going to be spending a million dollars for COPS this year from your budget, 
that million dollars better come from taxes that you levied this year, not next year or the year before. Because what is the word? Currently available financial resources. And that's what makes the job of the government accountants kind of complicated. If you want to spend money this year, you better have budgeted it this year. You can't say, oh, let me spend the money now, I'll borrow it later. And you know what an interesting example is? Think about all the snow removal costs. Did some of these governments budget that kind of snow removal cost for this winter? No, they're scrambling around to figure out how they're going to cover the shortfall for their uh, snow removal. Is everybody still with me? Especially the people in the back. Okay. All right. I'm going to be this first chapter, two chapters, there's a lot of material. If you're getting lost, I know it's after lunch, but uh, stop me. So I talked about these different bases. Now let's talk about these fun categories. So we have governmental activities. What are governmental activities? Police, fire, operating the swimming pool, recreation, health, safety. All these are what? Governmental functions. And then there are business type of activities which are classified as proprietary fund activities. Okay. So we basically have three types of funds. Governmental funds, proprietary funds, and fiduciary funds. Proprietary funds do what? They conduct business type of activities, like what? Operation of New Jersey Transit, for instance. Okay? Operation of airports, operation of municipal swimming pools, operation of golf courses. Those are what? Business type activities. Fiduciary funds, what does it mean? Think about the word fiduciary. What does the word fiduciary mean? It's kind of some special responsibility you have a trust, right? And in this case, fiduciary funds are some of the largest funds in government. They contain pension funds, investment trust funds. There are two other types of funds, which I won't go into now, but the pension funds, they are, but do the governments own those funds, the pension funds? Who owns those funds? The people who put their money into those pensions. So if New Jersey has pension funds worth $80 billion, can it say, oh, you know what? I'm running short here. Let me take money from the fiduciary funds and balance my budget. No. Fiduciary funds, in fact, are even protected from bankruptcy. But, you know, with pensions, not everybody is going to be managing their own pension. In that case, the governments manage the pension and hold those funds, and that's what the fiduciary activities are. So what are the three activities which governments are involved in? Governmental, proprietary, which is business type, and fiduciary. Got it. Okay? Those are the three. Now, let's take a, remember I talked to you about two versions of the financial report, the minimum required, and then the full capper, and this is what you'll be working for the next couple of weeks at least. The Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And um, okay, this is New Jersey's Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. This is what's published, and maybe someone will pick this date as their term project for this semester, okay? And um, so basically what this is, this is the published report. It's like the annual report issued by a corporation. Here it's issued by what? State of New Jersey, right? Okay. And you know, it starts off, it gives you Notice the word fiscal year ended, June 30th, 2012. So when did the year, so apparently they don't operate from January to December. When do they operate from? July 1 through 
June 30th, July 1 of 2011 through June 30th of 2012. This is the table of content, and maybe you might not be able to see this, but let's see if I can, oops. Look at the sections now. We have the introductory section, right? I don't want you, don't get lost in the details for the minute. Just look at the sections. Introductory section, financial section, right? You have, see the government-wide statements there? I talked to you a little bit about the fund statements, proprietary fund statements, right? RSI, required supplementary information, and then there is the statistical section itself. How long is this report, by the way? You're going to have a lot of fun. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. But basically, by the way, what it is is this semester-wide project that I would like you to work on, which is what I like to do is have you were you, uh, for any of your courses, did you organize yourselves in groups or anything like that? Okay. Maybe you could use the same group, but five to six people. And basically what it is, is at the end of each chapter, there's an exercise. And it asks you to go into the report, right? And look at various parts of it and respond to a series of questions. Got it? You respond to a series of questions. What I'd like you to do is, and this is how this project would operate, okay? So let's say there are 60 students here, and we have groups of six, so we have 10 groups. I'd like everyone to uh, give their group a name, so it'd be easy for me to remember. And what you'll be doing is, uh, and I have a date, I think it's uh, within the next few days, you have to select a state. We cannot have duplicate states. Pick out a state, and what I want you to do is pick out the state and the year for which the report is prepared. Here, what is it? June 30th, 2012. Why I say that is that some states might already have June 2013 prepared already. So here, that's what that is, okay? So everybody got that? You pick out the state, and this is how it's going to work. Since we are covering two chapters, a week, right? You have two exercises, right? My suggestion to you is that if you're a group of six, you basically pick, you organize yourself, you know, you pick two people for one week who will do the work on the CAFR itself. Instead of everybody doing it, you pick two people who go first or, you know, whenever their turn is, okay? And they basically post the answers to those exercises, and there's a discussion group that I'll show you here. I don't know, did you take a look at the uh, Blackboard site where we have, uh... okay. So um, first, by the way, I would like you to introduce yourself to me just so that I know a little bit. If, please do do that. It's, I, it's important to me. CAFR presentation. Uh, this is the uh, first one where what I'd like you to do is um, select the state, right? So just respond to that, okay? And only one person has to do it from the group itself. Then the second question, see this, the next part, examine state CAFR 1.1. Okay? You're going to go in and respond to a series of questions. I mean, the questions at the start are so simple, like, what are the titles of the government-wide statements? Well, we just saw the titles. But what I want you to do is, as you respond to these questions, if the question says, is this true or false? Just don't say true or false. Say something. Just don't say yes or no, period. Don't do that. Okay? Explain that. If there's some information that you found, uh, because I'm trying to make this very manageable by having uh, one, you know, one person participate. So let's say, so you respond to that exercise by Friday midnight. You have to do that because this is, there is a, 
a reason for this madness. Each week, Friday midnight is your first response. And then on Saturday and Sunday, every one, again, one person from each group is required to do a subsequent posting where you might find somebody's response and might want to comment on it or ask a question. Okay? We'll get into the rhythm. It sounds a little complicated, but it really isn't. So by Friday midnight, you respond. One person responds, actually two people because there are two chapters, one to each exercise. And then on, by Sunday, there has to be a subsequent posting. If you have more postings than one, that's fine. But I'll give you an example. So one of the questions is, government-wide statements, um, over how many pages uh, the format of the statement? Some states use one format, some states use another format. And, you know, a question could be, what types of things did you see on the statement of net position? How is it different from what I have? Okay? So, again, it is a pretty straightforward exercise, but the important part is not everybody in the class has to participate every week. So basically in your group, you have two people who come forward, and then the next two go, then the next two go, and then we start again. And everybody does it, I think, twice during the semester. Questions? Questions? Please feel free to, but that's what that is. It's really. Uh, And this is the second exercise, okay? And um, if anything else comes to my mind, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. But um, let me just go back for a moment. Um, see this exercise? This is the exercise. Each week, you'll have this examine the CAFR exercise. Introductory section. Read the letter of transmittal. Does the material define the primary government? You'll go through it and answer the question. But as I said, just don't say 